I'm Brian Foster, and this is the Grindhouse Institute. On each episode of this podcast, Jeremy Floyd and I program and discuss a double or triple feature movie night. Each of the movies share common themes, and we discuss them here. We're happy you could join us for today's film block that will be the finale of a three-part series we call Zombie Evolution. It took over 50 years for the zombie to evolve into the pop culture icon we are all familiar with today. The look, feel, and behavior of this movie monster finally solidified in 1985. The zombie no longer resembled a lumbering human with disheveled clothing. It had finally become its own distinct creature. Today's Grindhouse Institute block is a double feature, Day of the Dead, the third in George A. Romero's original Dead trilogy, and Dan O'Bannon's Return of the Living Dead. Both films were released in 1985. In Day of the Dead, humans have become the minority, outnumbered 400,000 to 1, in a world overrun with the reanimated dead. A group of scientists, engineers, and soldiers have all found refuge in an underground bunker with the hopes of finding a cure to eradicate the mysterious infection. But the real danger lies inside the bunker. When a U.S. Army canister of noxious chemicals is accidentally released, the vapors cause the dead to burst out of their graves with an insatiable hunger for human brains. Return of the Living Dead is an official, retconned, reboot, spin-off sequel to the horror classic Night of the Living Dead. And in this film, Romero's zombie worlds of dawn and day never happen, but what the events depicted in night were all true. Thank you for listening to the Grindhouse Institute. Please enjoy. Yeah, we are gonna party. Well, where? Where are we gonna party? I like death. I like death with sex. How about you, Casey? You like sex with death? Yeah, so fuck off and die. Essentially from, I think it, I'll have to look this up again, but like, essentially from, I think, 1989 through uh, almost 2000, there was like no zombie movies. Up until like 28 days later? Yeah, which, which is when? Like 2000, 2001? Oh no, 28 Oh yeah, 20, 2003, 28 days later. 2003. Yeah, so, so so then all of a sudden, you know, you get this like big spike after sort of 9/11 and the like, zombie movies come out of the woodwork. And then you get an even bigger spike after the fucking 2008 crash. And that's where like Walking Dead came out of and like you you know, <laughs> it's interesting because in that form it sort of solidified a loose definition of zombies that people had in their minds into this like soap opera that they were following every week. And they, you know, were very, 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 very familiar with the zombie shit to the point where like, mm-hmm. you know, you're selling zombie merch and zombie survival kits and all this crap. Like <laughs> it, it's like space balls, the zombie. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I had the idea when, when walking dead started, like uh, to make like a dollar store version of a zombie survival kit. Uh-huh. I, I wish I wish I could have met somebody that could have helped me with that because yeah. probably could have made a lot of money doing that. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't be doing a podcast now. Be, yeah, exactly. be living on the beach with a cigar, right? Be living in that that remote island somewhere, marking yeah. off a calendar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you you, you wouldn't be uh, talking about zombie movies. You'd be living one. What's yes. that? What's that drum music that I yeah. keep hearing? <laughs> is that the soundtrack, or is that for my really hearing? <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to the Grindhouse Institute for part three of the zombie evolution. I'm Brian Foster. Nice to hear from you. I'm here with Jeremy Floyd. Howdy. How's it going? Good. Yeah? It's it's going. Okay, good. That's all, that's all I needed to know. I didn't need you to expand on that at all. Oh, okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and with us as... As uh, regularly, as a regular special guest star, is this how we're... Um... <laughs> regular special guest starring. Yeah. Oh, there, there we go. go. Uh, Michael Floyd, Jeremy's brother. Um, Hello, who, thank you. Cle- clearly, he and I uh, grew up watching and loving the same films, especially after our discussion <laughs> last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad to talk about uh, today's double feature of uh, Day of the Dead and Return of the Living Dead, uh, from 1980, both from 1985. Nice. Right. Uh, only a month apart. Summer One month apart. Yeah. Um, although I guess uh, finished watching uh, Day again last night, and that was a chore. Uh, but um, <laughs> <Wow>. the <laughs> 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 but it was uh, 
Oh, I'll I'll get into it in a second. But anyway, sure. the, the <laughs> what was crazy was like like how, just how insanely violent it was, and that I was wondering like, man, it, did they get rated X on this? And they did, or not rated? Unrated. Unrated. Yeah, they they yeah. couldn't give it an MPAA rating. Yeah, and. So didn't that like just uh, tank any idea of it ever making money? No distribution. You can't get into theaters with no rating. And it was a, uh, I think it was kind of an fu move by George Romero to say, "No, I'm not gonna, you know, cut down anything in the yeah. film." And, and I mean, as if you watch the film, as you just did, um, that that violence doesn't happen for until the last about ten minutes of that movie, and it is ridiculous yeah. violence by that point. You know, I mean, there are some yeah. moments, obviously, with the dream sequences and such. Well, it, you know, like maybe three people in a row get Laffy taffy in that one. It's just Laffy like... <laughs> taffy The one especially looks like there's like a gumball coming out of his eyeball when he rips his Oh, yeah, that was gross. <laughs> um, but clearly, um, as we discussed in the previous episode, Day is definitely focused on the military industrial complex, or at least a satire of said, said thing, um, mm-hmm. and uh, consumerism with Dawn, and then racism and... Well, it... I, I feel like the first one, the, the common thing that people always cite is like, you know, it's the, oh, the breakdown of the family or whatever. And that's kind of the, you know, it, the child murdering the parents in the very end, right? And right. It's, um, it's only one part of it, though, really, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that just one it, minor part? It's a big part, okay? Okay. I, yeah, I'll argue that. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. The, the, yeah, the, the odd part about that is is that she doesn't, she doesn't bite them like a normal zombie would. She... Straight up gets a hoe and murders murders them. Well, the she does uh, chew on her dad's arm. We we see that when mom comes downstairs, and she's like, "What's going on?" And then and then that's when she grabs the uh, the spade or whatever. And which is, uh, um, I guess, kind of close to the end of Day of the Dead, where there uh, is a person actually getting torn in half, telling zombies to choke on the bottom half of his body. Right. Uh, what, <laughs> One guy getting his, you know, the eyeball ripped out with the the gumball. Um, another oh, right. guy, I believe, just got gets his head ripped off, and the sound effect there is him screaming. And then as the head is removed, it kind of they like pitch shift it, and it's like <laughs> like it just yeah, it's like his vocal cords are getting yeah. Oh, that was dude, that was really good. The that horrendous was really good. <laughs> sound of vocal cords being stretched until they snap. It's hardcore violent at the end, um, but overall. <laughs> It's a pretty uh, tame movie. I guess bland movie is a better description. Well, I, I, I actually, I, um, I mentioned to Michael last night, I, I was surprised. So, you know, we had originally watched it a couple of times in high school or somewhere around that age. And then like, um, yeah, it was high you school. know, we would, um, we watched it the first time uh, just to see what it was. And then. Uh, then we sort of hate watched it uh, with some friends and kind of did our own mystery science theater. Can I ask what order you saw this in versus like dawn and night? It was it was in order. It was, it yeah. was okay. night, night dawn, dawn day. day. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember just absolutely hating every second of it uh, from well, high school. And then you know, but the the part that I wanted to kind of get to on this uh, discussion was just that like I was surprised at how much I actually was kind of into it this time around. Until maybe the last like twenty minutes, and it just kind of like it's kind of sputters out, like more or less right along the the time that um, uh, the like you made me feel like an asshole, like gets his arm <laughs> bitten off and, and mm-hmm. chopped off or whatever. Like, like ironically, as the action picks up, as the sort of horror picks up, and like all the you know the uh, immediate violence and confrontation, like it it somehow like loses momentum uh, in doing that. It's, it's, it's a weird thing because, you know, the power dynamics underground were really interesting. So right? the problem I have with that scene or that section of the film, uh-huh. of what you're talking about is once Miguel loses his arm, then we've got the helicopter crew and is her name Lori? Her name, her real name is Lori. I think that's Lori Cardell is her real name. I can't uh, remember her, her character's God, name. Yeah, uh, Sarah. 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 That's Sarah. Right. Yeah. And so the three of them, Mr. Bean, right, and Flyboy, and Sarah, are uh-huh. now in the their little trailer, and it's kind of reminiscent of the house that was kept in Dawn of the Dead, They're, that like normalized um, area that they created for themselves. And then the problem I have with the story is then they need to go get some more supplies to leave, like you said. 
Mm-hmm. They go back into the base, which well, is, I mean, I'm assuming just... I, sorry, well, they, I, I they thought go there they, they were just going to get, get morphine get, for him, and then... Right, uh, you know, uh, Mc, but Mc, then McDermott they get hung up says, because "I think I think we should get I think we should take the hel- helicopter for somebody else does. Like it's just an offhand, like kind of. Mm, this is not looking so good. No, that is the plan at that point, though. I mean, is it though? I mean, because I I thought that they were just gonna sit there while he recuperated, right? I, I and mean, to see if he was gonna turn. Right? Or not. No, no, it, it, because it was like okay, I mean, certainly we'll more things have gotten so bad." They just had that Mexican standoff with with the the, the army guys. Um, yeah, like it's it's clearly gone past the point of no return. Um, Shoot that woman who you were dating. You think I'm fucking around, Steve? That's what I'm saying. Like, so, so that was the plan then, right? It's like they're not going to stay. I, I, they're I mean, going to leave. I. I it was it was a little unclear. Like it it wasn't it wasn't like yes we're doing this now. It, it was. You just said that they got past the point of. No I mean return. I'm I'm saying that that things had not quite devolved completely, but it was it was obvious that that this is where things were going. You know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm I was I, I was I a little bit I was a little fuzzy on that that part of the story. I mean, like, I, just, I, I, just I guess that yeah, section. I guess that it, it's it, it's a it little unclear. Definitely seems like they were trying to push uh, for this. Like they're going to leave. We need to leave before uh, uh, someone else takes the helicopter. Um, you know. Okay. Well, let me just get one last thing. So she grabbed the morphine. She runs into Doctor uh, Martin. They're like, oh, let's go. Doctor Martin. Doctor Martin. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Fisher. Martin, you Fisher. Mean? Yeah. Do- That's funny, Dr. Dr. Martin. The vampire the vampire doctor? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, then they, they run back, check out what Bub's up to. He's like, you know, listening to, you know, classical music or whatever. It's like. They have a moment. And it's like, wait, wait, what are you doing? Get back to what you're doing. Get, yes, that's the problem I had. I'm like, why are they taking their time with this right yeah, now? That's, and that's they're just why like, I interpreted it as being them just thinking about it, you know? Yeah, I just think that by that time, we've already had the Mexican standoff, and you've already got Jamaican Flyboy telling everyone that, you know, they're not going to keep you guys alive. They're going to keep us alive because we're their ride. Right. But you guys are fucked, so he's you either make the decision to leave or just die here with the rest of them, which I guess they could have done had they not gotten the the, the whirly bird with them, right. you know. So, um, but yeah, I, I like the shooting gallery ending though. I, like I said before, I, I liked them running through the caverns to try to get to to the, the <laughs> ladder that led them out, and it was kind of like it had been great in a little video game to have a shooting gallery of zombies. Well, it, just it would be up great and, if you were playing that video game. It, it's, <laughs> it's boring to watch someone else play it. I, I mean. <laughs> I know that 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 is the entire uh, you're, like conceit you're right about that. Of, of what Twitch is supposed to be watching other people play games, but I you know I find it kind of boring. Uh, but you know, especially when when like the characters are like okay, like they didn't really have obstacles. It was just like every once in a while a zombie would pop out and they'd take care of it. A just while they were out, like reloading, there was like somebody yeah. that would pop up and it was just they'd get him every time. But but it wasn't it, it wasn't compounding like where it's like oh no we ran out of ammo oh no this happened oh no we're being surrounded oh no. You know, it's like, no, they added another person when they ran out of ammo who had like a whole slew of ammo the next time, <laughs> you know, like it was like one more person got added to the group. I mean, I, I, I watched this movie and I was very into it watching it again. And I watched it as if I was watching some sort of comic book or a cartoon. And if I, I think uh-huh. if this movie was animated, it would be a pretty dope cartoon. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have to take it so seriously. Maybe, maybe that's part of it too, but I, I, I actually was, like I said, I, I was kind of into it uh, as it was happening. Uh, this is the third e- time you've seen it, then. <laughs> yeah, third or fourth. Just I mean, that. I, but I, I haven't seen it in in years and years. I, I the parts I remember are uh, some of the grisly violence at the end, uh, and then, you know. Um, I, I don't know what Bub learning his ABCs and the I, I the, liked Bub. He was my favorite the, part of the uh, movie. Parts of like yeah, you know that 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 guy's line. I I think we would say that to each other all the time. Which just the like, <laughs> you you made me look like an asshole. You made me feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> um, um, everyone's but, uh, scared. Everyone's scared. You're not though. <laughs> You're not scared. 
except well, you. It, it was interesting so that like, the guy, so the fuck like, what? Well, yeah, <laughs> the, the guy wasn't. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it seemed like they were gonna make him a bigger character, and then they just kind of you know gave up at a certain point because like, well, I feel like know, there's the, a reason there was, he was some so really stressed out. I feel like he, he probably was a, a soldier, right, that went through some cool stuff, and we didn't see any of that. Well, okay, but or it's just that. You know this underground world that's like you know ticking by you know day by day in that uh, concrete bunker, um, you know is is just kind of you know getting to you and like you know like the as we like learn throughout the rest of the movie like the sort of madness and and the like uh, um, the 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 stir crazy aspect of it you know you, you could see that kind of uh, coming. Well, in. yeah, and and I I, I was saying because we we kept we kept noting that. Uh, Rickles and and uh, Steel just laugh hysterically nonstop, and I, mm-hmm. I and I was, I was just like, yeah, these guys have to be on whippets or something. I mean, they, they just have yeah. to be like, <laughs> yeah, stoned right, out it's of like, their like, minds. They, they've been there for months, and like they do this every day, and they're still like, woo, let's get them, woo. And yeah, they're, they're <laughs> just <going> like <laughs> completely insane. I mean, all it's like, throwbacks got big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I. I, I that's why I had to imagine those at least those two characters were on something. You know, <laughs> they they just looked zoinked out of their minds. So maybe, uh, but, but the idea is that like you know, the, it seemed like there was going to be something interesting there, like the the sort of I don't know what the the end of the world locked room interplay that George does so well in Night and um, in at least the maybe first uh, hour of this movie. It, you know, it seemed like you know they were going to do something with Miguel. Like okay, they they were painting this really complicated picture so he's uh folding under this you know immense pressure of the end of the world here and you know on top of what they're uh, tasked with doing with uh you know wrangling zombies to have uh dr mengala fuck with them a little bit and uh, but it, it seems pretty pointless and um anyway so he, he's like cracking under the pressure like they have this fight it seems like he's uh has a sort of third dimension to him and then you know she gives him the sedative and you know he flips out and then you know the next time we see him he's like go away go away we're done <laughs> and then you know the next time we see him he's getting his arm ripped off and it's like okay well i guess you know perhaps uh i know uh brian you'd mentioned a couple times th- that the script was a lot longer and there's a lot more to it but you know perhaps there was something interesting with miguel that they uh didn't bother to flesh out in in uh there in- has to there has the, to be the final version. Well, yeah. I, I think I think the main thing with with Day was that it, it was it was you know originally double the size and probably double the length too. It was probably like two or three movies that that George was just like way over ambitious about doing, and um, he wanted he wanted to do it uh, you know without a lot of interference and without uh, you know having to PGify it, which is what happened with Land of the Dead. Um, uh, but in order to do do it the way he wanted to do it, they had to take about half the budget. Uh, so I think it went from six to three million. And he originally had an entire um, above ground sequence that he was going to have. So I think mm-hmm. I think what he what he ended up doing was just collapsing, you know, that script into a much more condensed version of it. And, and I assume a lot of characters got condensed as well. So I read um, probably the first quarter of that script. Uh, it's online. You can find it pretty easily. Oh, okay. The beginning of it is uh, the, the group of the helicopter folks um, and the scientists, if you will, they were more of a group that were infiltrating this place to find new place, a new place to live, you know, because they were scoping out for kind of like what they're doing at the beginning of the movie. They're looking for you know, settlements or anything like that of civilized people. Mm -hmm. And so they find this military installation down in Florida, and this military installation has these lined-up zombies outside, all with different colored vests on, like red and blue and yellow and all these different colors. And that meant the different stages of where they were in their training or their uh, rehabilitation. Uh And so they were using them literally like the blues would be like their own separate army that they could send out and like infiltrate. And then the reds were more aggressive and they could send them out like kind of they just be started becoming militarized, but weaponized. And mm-hmm. so I um that's as pretty much as far as I got through the script. Um, we should mm-hmm. share that out on social or something for this. Yeah, we can put the link in the description or something. Yeah, exactly. But uh, 
you know, clearly the movie had a perspective on, you know, the the military industrial complex, like you were saying, or like, I, I actually, maybe more so Return has that perspective. In, in this one, it's more so the uh, military itself, maybe. Um, yeah, kind or, of fascism. Yeah, exactly. And um, what was interesting about these movies and like the time they came out in, this is 85. Um, so... In the 70s, uh, in particular, you know, late 60s, early 70s, the depictions of the military in uh, American movies were, you know, getting more and more critical. Uh, it, it had switched out of the Audie Murphy, um, you know, um, you know post World War II, you know, depictions of like uh, cartoonish heroics and, uh, you know, total reverence to something a lot more critical. And that was, you know, obviously very informed by the anti-war movement and Vietnam and all these other things. And by 85, you know, that uh, attitude had, had still persisted, but it was just on the verge of swinging the other way, just to where we are now, where it's like every movie uh, with any sort of military uh, um, depiction is always you know, just completely rosy and, you know, fetishized and, you know, uh, you know groveling and worshiping um, and totally uncritical. And if there's ever... Um, Michael Michael Bay uh, porn to the extreme. Yeah, exactly. And, and if there's ever a, you know, uh, rogue character who's a bad guy, uh, it's, you know, made sure that that is a very isolated thing and it has nothing to do with the... It's not a condemnation of the institution overall uh right. but what was interesting is like you know how these two movies it was still in that uh mindset and you know they were st- the, the culture was still uh allowed to uh you know criticize and you know um sort of point out the flaws in the uh the, the sort of the military the military industrial complex and and these two movies had an interesting uh perspective on that Right on. <laughs> Very good. Okay, uh, I guess we're done with this conversation. It's been nice, folks. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to bring up, and I was I was talking about this before we um, we, we uh, jumped on and started recording. Um, we were talking about how each of the Romero's films be- have become their self-contained, you know, in the same world perhaps, but they've been their own movies and their own their own thing. You know, night, right. day, mm-hmm. dawn, land. Um, but you know, there were. There was a music cue in Day. I don't know if you remembered that. That was like right back to Dawn of the Dead. Um, and yeah. then, and, and there was one something else, and I can't think of what it would be. Uh, what uh, it was the, at the very end when all the sort of zombies kind of flood into the cave or whatever uh, of Day. They all were very blue, which was different than right, the ones that right, were right. Uh, uh, seen throughout the rest of the movie. And it's funny. I was like, oh wow, they. I wonder if they shot this part first because these look a lot like the Dawn zombies and then they had kind of evolved into something else. Yeah. Um, well, they, they, were, they were a combination of green and blue in, in the end last scene. Um, well, yeah, but mostly in, in the when they come down on that little platform and, you know, when they're, they bust through that, or bust through, when they like, have that little, like, uh, twig snapped off the gate, and you know, the, the whole right. <laughs> zombies come through. <laughs> How are they um, going to get through that? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> uh, you don't want to rile those ones up, but um, <laughs> the uh, it was a straw holding them back. But um, those zombies all looked very, uh, you know, uh, you know, put together. They didn't have the sort of uh, extensions in the forehead or like you know, rotting, you know, gunk or whatever. It's just they looked, you know, very uh, spray painted uh, blue. Like they did in um, in Dawn, right? Uh, but it, it's funny because like for most of the movie up to that point, for you know an hour and a half, we had seen a newer sort of different type of zombie that had um, yeah those like uh, accentuated you know cheekbones and you know the kind of you know funky uh, protruding teeth and all this stuff and you know chunks of uh, face missing um, and that sort of like yep yeah, yep yeah, uh, pallid. Uh, you know, it was a yellow green uh, drowned vampire look. Um, Bub especially, I thought Bub looked very yeah. Vamp- vampiric. Yeah, 
somewhere yeah, between very, very, su- very sunken, almost um, minimal makeup. You know, he was just kind of, yeah. he was more human than the other ones. And I obviously pretty intentional. Yeah. A good, a good Frankenstein uh, wannabe type makeup, which is appropriate mm-hmm. for who Dr. Frankenstein father yeah. was. Yeah. Or not really his father, I guess his mentor or whatever. I'm so um, proud of you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Bob. <laughs> oh, but yeah, but he, here was something that I, I mentioned also that, that that there's there's not a lot of connective tissue, but there is like some visual motifs that they they kind of connect um, the movies together. So at the end of night, you see the townsfolk and and the sheriff are just kind of roaming the countryside and 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 picking off zombies one by one, um, and that's how dawn opens. You know, with uh, just this kind of uh, continuation of, of 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 those people just moving along the countryside and and taking out zombies um and then the end of dawn has two people riding off into the sunset in a helicopter and the beginning of day has people uh going going looking for people in a helicopter in the um, whirly bird in the whirly bird <laughs> yeah um, that's a good call. And, and, they, and they do they do call uh uh the the jamaican guy uh Flyboy, yes, yes, yeah. That was that was the. I think that was, that the, was it. it. That, that was, that was it. the other connection. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. Got it. I'm glad. I knew we'd come to it eventually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so should we uh, move on to the more fun and uh, maybe a little bit less serious uh, Return of the Living Dead? Yeah, let's do it. Um, now I understand what you were saying. The the party time line. <laughs> I, I thought I didn't know if you were I didn't know that you were actually singing the theme song to the film when you were oh. saying that. <laughs> Wait, had you not seen it or I it, have uh... I have seen it. I just don't remember that I didn't remember that that was oh, okay, the, yeah. the theme song of the movie. And this movie rocks in so many ways. <laughs> it is <laughs> literally so good. Um, and it starts out so good with, you know, really fun characters that um, I already care about, like from the second they start up. Like the second this uh, new new guy comes on on the scene here to get trained by this older gentleman who's going to show him the ropes of this uh, what are they, they, they collect are they a morgue they're not a morgue the yeah, morgue is uh, across the street uh, they're like a shipping um, it's it's a you need a medical supply so, so oh, okay so it is related to medical I th- I think it's I I think it's mostly for uh, dissecting cadavers is there. You're right, because they had skeletons with perfect teeth, right? And they've got the half, the half, uh, half hor- dog um, dogs, yeah. Which was yeah. butterflies awesome. randomly for no reason. I um, mean, exactly, yeah. Talk about uh, some of the best gags though for the dead returning to life when all of your <laughs> bugs on the wall that are pinned there and your half dogs are now coming to life, and this like that somehow was able to howl despite being cut in half but uh, we'll just I was, we'll just leave I was looking past yeah i was looking past all loopholes of this story i think yeah. this movie is basically perfect it is. Um, uh, yeah you're, you're you're picking at the wrong uh the wrong scab on that one that <laughs> wrong one so it's like <laughs> <laughs> um and then obviously linnea quigley making her um debut i believe in in film and she's been in a bunch after that of her basically taking her clothes off and dancing for most of the films <laughs> that she's in yeah, uh, she was the naked uh... Zool. I always called her Zool. She was like, "I get turned on by graveyards. <laughs> Don't you just want to be dead?" Yeah, and then she's like, "Do you ever think about how you're gonna die? I'm gonna die by a bunch of men surrounding me and and, and eating me." And then all of a sudden, that is how she ended up going. So yeah, I guess a weird, that weird was uh, fantasy to have. Um, very, very yeah, strange. She's got, um, she was the the Babe Ruth of her death. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> called it. Zing. Um, yeah, but it's um, it's funny how uh, they are very self-referential. It's um, they have um, well, they they reference night directly. They they call night, and it's like, oh, that really happened. The, mo- the, the so in this world, the the movie exists, and uh, it, in that uh, it, it was actually real. And it, but what they're saying is that the origin of all this stuff was the uh, the. You know, there's some chemical, the trioxin or whatever, um, that the army developed, and that's what happened to uh, that small Pennsylvania town, right, in, in the '60s or whatever. Right, exactly. Um, and then these giant drums uh, full of this 
chemical agent plus the bodies that they sealed up inside them were delivered to this delivery um, medical supply place and they they've had these things now tell me if you've got a bunch of drums delivered to you and you look down into one of these things and saw that thing looking back up at you that you wouldn't question where the shit came from and maybe call the number <laughs> on the side although I guess that's not the best move but ultimately it's not the, no ultimately for the human race it's not the best move um, because this movie just keeps compounding how the the problem will always get worse no matter right. how many times we try to change it. Here, let's burn these bodies and get rid of them. Okay, right. that becomes acid rain. And then let's torch this entire town. Then that becomes an acid rain cloud that covers the world. Or I'm assuming the world. I guess that's what you're supposed right. to assume. And then it infects uh, what it touches. Yeah, exactly. And like So cool. Um, <laughs> so right. cool. And, and, and the idea is that uh, they've sort of uh, un- unleashed this. Uh, this horror upon the world and, and there's sort of no going back. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. And, you know, it's uh, sort of directly tied to the uh, the solution they, they think that they uh, came up with, which is to, to nuke them in the end. Uh, but as it turns out, that doesn't help. No, burning these Only things and turning worse. them into vapor <laughs> is probably the worst decision you could make. And yeah. insta- instantly vaporizing an entire town of them is like releasing a chemical agent into the air, like instantly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this movie is, uh, I know I said it, it was incredibly fun, but the... The art in this movie or the the effects and the creatures and everything, it really had its own voice, um, even though it was talking about, you know, being referenced um, by Night of the Living Dead. Um, but between the tar man and the guy on the meat hook, you know, in the in the in the cold storage and all of these other zombies, how smart the zombies were, how strategic they were, um, mm-hmm. they, they were so much more threatening, I believe, than the than the zombie films that were merited because I think they were more front and center as the threat as opposed to the people being the threat. The zombies were actually right. going to fuck you up. Um, you're not going to like just have to lumber past some slow zombie. You know, all you got to do is be faster than and basically these things will set you up. You know, and call for more cops. Right, <laughs> right. dispatch. Oh, we would like more paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one when you dispatch. <laughs> <laughs> No, the exactly. And the, they did for them were great. Send more paramedics. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is so funny. <laughs> it's so good. But Dispatch. yeah, you, you you can't get away from uh, you know you can't get away from them the same way. You can't like outrun them. Uh, that they they can talk and they can you know fool you and, and those things. And they hide and wait for you. Right. In terms of the you know um, the mythology of of the zombie, this one takes it into a, a different place um but it also you know so so like these zombies like you know don't necessarily uh conform to what even what we think of as, as zombies today you know the what the walking dead or zombie land or any of these movies had in them um but um it did put sort of the uh, idea of like the brains into the the you know, very specific world of zombies and then also even more so than the than the uh, Romero films, the uh, zombies were, uh, you know, a lot more skeletal. Like that 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 thing that sits on the tray, the torso with the sort of you know, uh, right. whipping awesome. tail, uh, you know, spinal cord. The, the the very first one that bursts out of the ground is yeah. basically Skull just a and... skeleton with with eyes for some reason still. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> and 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 the tar man, yeah. I mean, I mean, I I still think the torso on the on the uh, block though sells the whole way, and it and it the 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 way that they match the voice to the to the animatronic and everything, I think is still a really strong gag. And yeah, it's yeah, it's great because that becomes the narrator or the um the spokesperson for the zombies. All right, and right. and it like it gives you like why they're doing it, why do they want brains? You know, it helps them feel better. It soothes that pain of. <laughs> Of being dead, of of rotting, and it's yeah. like I, I thought well, that was it, cool. It's funny all, they set all up that their stuff, own rules. Like, you know, it it sort of um, uh, all those rules only sort of exist in this uh, movie or maybe in this franchise, I should say, uh, the, the Return right. of the Living Dead franchise. But the you know the idea of like the a lot more skeletal, a lot more decomposed uh, zombies, which became uh, the gold standard of zombies 
in even things like, like I said, The Walking Dead, like that, uh, that torso was almost what Rick met in the pilot of Walking Dead, if you remember that. Right. Yeah. And our idea of zombies of like, you know, okay, one eye missing, like a lot of rotting stuff. You know, some of that was in the very opening of Day of the Dead. But, you know, moreover in, in this movie with, you know, a lot of that, you know, tattered clothes and like the, you know, you can see a lot of uh, uh, what's underneath and like you know, there's a very skeletal look to them, um, you know, that you didn't get in the sort of uh, 79 zombies like Zombie 2 and uh, Dawn of the Dead. Um, you know, it. this is sort of, you know, part of the reason we wanted to put this, uh, these movies into this, um, into this discussion because it's like, even though the Return of the Living Dead, they have sort of different rules about the, the tar man and like, you know, the, the, the origin story and like the needing brains and whatever, um, where the monster got to as a movie monster, you know, kind of landed in, you know, in, in this, this format in, in 1985. Right. I, I, uh, uh, I, I do wonder if that was, you know, uh, a deliberate thing that either either was mandated or or if they just wanted to try to separate themselves from Romero's movies more because it specifies not people brains and clearly in Romero's version they're they're all about eating every every inch of the body, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, they, like the the rules in in day, you know, uh, don't necessarily make any sense. They he, they points out, okay, they they can't eat anything, but they still want to eat and all this stuff, and they, and then they, they can't get any nourishment from it, so they still want to pure instinct. They they sometimes want to uh, bite someone and turn them, and then sometimes they just want to devour them, top to bottom, like in Zombie Two. Although I guess I will say in in day they did point to the maybe the possible. Or at least they hinted at the possible theory that there are different uh, sort of classes of zombie, or uh, you know, different uh, you know types that will, you know, some are more aggressive and some are more like Bub, and you know, right? Because that. Frankenstein had to actually put down one of them. He said he was too unruly. He couldn't. He yeah. couldn't break <laughs> through to that one, so he had to put that one away. <laughs> Um, and speaking of like zombies turning into their now current form, I, I I fully agree with that, especially because of Walking Dead. I mean, obviously, Nicotero, Greg Nicotero worked on this movie. He's in this movie, yeah. The Day of the Dead. Oh yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Right. And I mean, like there is a Doctor Tongue that shows up in Don, um, Walking Dead from Day of the Dead. That initial like intro title card zombie with, oh, with the no, yeah, yeah, no yeah. jaw. Um, that was in uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, they brought they did a they did an homage to him. They also did an homage to the actually uh, real quick. I, what? what what's, what's funny is like the Doctor Tongue. It, it's a good example of like man, like think of how how uh, different the standards are for this uh, level of violence. Right, where it's like Day of the Dead cannot get an MPA rating. It's like it's so uh, awful. You 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 can't show now it's on TV. And now it's just on, on regular yeah. you know, basic cable. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we've, right. we've been totally desensitized to this kind of stuff. And I think now they've you know realized that zombies are no longer you know people. So you can dismember them, and you're not really showing people dismembering people. You're dismembering monsters at this point. So it kind of I mean, has is, that fantastic. Yeah, I guess that, maybe that's how they uh, justify that's it. That's the remember, justification. But probably they got around it. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have to um, go full Evil Dead. You know, green goo coming out of everything. <laughs> different colors for no reason yeah exactly um but we're, we're gonna watch evil dead right at some point is that what you just said <laughs> evil dead yeah i don't want to i don't want to skip out on that movie at all we'll find a yeah. oh, maybe that's our sequel day right wasn't that one we were talking about for sequels yeah we were, we were talking about evil for, dead 2 yeah like the where the uh doing a little series of movies where the sequel was better than the first one and i think dawn of the dead fits in there perfect <laughs> we'll watch it again <laughs> disagree night Jesus. Uh, for sure is, is is better is that right in my opinion yeah, oh, there you go god that's such a terrible opinion it, it is funny that that romero said that <laughs> that he thought he thought day was was the best of his movies of, i think of, he was just trying to movies. justify that one he because i think this is the first and, and and that's why brian believes it he just uh, he'll believe anything george this says is, and... that's right this is the best one <laughs> No, this is, um, I think he was, um, he was the most considerate to the zombies in this one. They became, you know, who he felt kind of more sorry for. And you started feeling a little bit more for Bub or what the potential of Bub could be on a larger scale. Um, and so I think that that's why he defends this one. But if you watch his films that came after this land and then the document, 
documentary of the dead or i don't even remember what they i didn't that diary see diary of the dead thank you diary of the and dead and then there was there was yeah. one more i believe the survival Di- diary of the dead. and survival were the, the yeah. two later stages i I, I vaguely remember kind of liking Diary. I'd like to see that one again. I, 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 um, I, I, I it wasn't, it wasn't good, but it, it was very, very low budget. But uh, survival looked terrible. But they, they feel goofy to me, and they feel more of a, of a joke. And I think that's where Day started heading for him. Is more of this is, you know, more of just we're trying to satirize things with these, you know, larger than life zombies that are getting literally blown apart or eating people and it's just a little bit on the extreme side so we don't have to take it you know it's a little bit more comical that that's kind of a that's an interesting uh idea to bring up because it's like you know you could see so night is pretty severe then you get to uh dawn and it lightens up and you know with uh a lot of those montages the pie in the face all all that other stuff we had kind of mentioned last time around um, and then it gets more severe in day, uh, pr- probably even more so than, than, than night itself. M- maybe just because of uh, the, the world has gotten to a place where it's, uh, you know, like Frankenstein points out that, uh, yeah, you could have, uh, killed them in the beginning, but you blew it. And right. at this point, <laughs> they're uh, like 400,000 to one now. Yeah. If they acted sooner yeah. during a pandemic, maybe mm. things would be better. Yeah, Interesting. Interesting. And then, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yep. you look at how return sort of handles this now they went um uh sort of you know full uh sort of i don't know what balls to the wall um uh you know parody and and uh having fun with it maybe it's not fully parody i guess but it's um they are definitely not taking it seriously it's it's definitely more on the comedy side and so they they kind of had that uh, energy from dawn, but took it even further into having fun. Yeah. And you know, it also it also has a much more rock and soundtrack um, where, yeah. where where day is is very. It's all MIDI. It's all uh, synth or, or whatever. John and, Harrison, and, yeah, classic and I love composer. I love John Harrison's music, but yeah, um, it, it's, it's not it, it's not great. It's it doesn't well, seem it just, very. It drags inspired. it drags you down into the the depths of hell rather than uh, allowing you a little bit of a buffer to kind of like step back and and just see it as a movie you know you're just kind of yeah. literally in 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 the the pit of despair with with the rest of them honestly i feel like he was hired for that at a very low rate and um he had one keyboard to make that soundtrack oh, in yeah, probably absolutely. 3 days to do it you know and like I, I I think that movie was thrown thrown together like it it, it kind of feels like it too for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean like uh, I, I mean and, and I guess that's why I, I feel less inclined to be as critical towards Day as I once was. Uh, right. Just just knowing what a what a gung ho like family effort it was to 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 make it just you know, to get I mean, it made just just yeah. to get it made. Uh, was pure pure enthusiasm because uh, like all the the zombie extras weren't even like paid. I mean they were given like a no. dollar and a, and a t-shirt that said I was in Day of the Dead as a zombie or whatever. Uh, and it was just you know you know Pittsburghers wanting wanting to be in a George Romero movie. Um, you know. But what's the, what was the you know production like for Return? It was an independent film, right? Originally, uh, it wasn't a studio picture. No, yeah. God, I mean, what am I? What am I from the 1930s? Was that a right. studio picture? Yeah. I want to well, be in your next picture. Capital pictures. Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> I think they made it independently. Uh, so yeah, Re- Return was was made for only four million. Well, anyway, so like, but just to finish the thought of like the idea that um, what Return sort of gets right is sort of that sense of fun because the apocalyptic zombie movie at a certain point can you can only take it sort of so far and it either has to go fun or you have to, I don't know what, find a way out of it because as sort of proven by day, they, at, you know, the opening shot is, uh, they're, they, they already know that they're fucked. Right. So it's like, okay, well, where could this possibly go? Either, either they, I don't know what, starve to death or they get eaten by zombies. Right. The idea that it, um, it, it like hits up against the limits of what you can do with an apocalyptic zombie movie it, it, where it's like um, you can either 
I don't know what so, sort of you know turn it on its head the way they, that Richard Matheson did in I Am Legend, or make it funny, or find a way to uh, um, you know okay the the zombies don't live very long or what or they're their undead state doesn't live very long and like you just have to wait them out or and it's like once you've crossed a cer- certain threshold the apocalyptic part of it and especially if you're taking it seriously uh it runs into the the limit of like well you know there's nowhere to go in the story like it's game over and so when you get to like night of the living dead for instance like you get the sense that it's game over especially when they're you know uh, that montage of you know, throwing the bodies on the on the on the fire, but you don't have to wallow in the game over the way you did with Day of the Dead, right? Right. And what do you mean as the, as they're eating the rest of the people that are left in the? You mean that that wallow? It, no, no, no. I I just know that the entire movie. It's oh like, yeah, I get you. Just that doom that's looming. Doom right. from you know uh, oh, the opening frame to the end. I, I mean, and and the the end they no they kinda, levity. They, they do get away. It, it seems like, but it, it also feels like kind of a dream, right? It's like she opens the uh, helicopter door, you know, gets grabbed by a zombie, and then cut to she wakes up on a beach. I had an argument that she was killed. We're, we're not sure. Yeah, that like if this is really happening or this is like you know the. Uh, the, the moment before she dies, uh, she's picturing what could have uh, been if they had gotten to the helicopter sooner, or or if she had gassed it up. The you know when when uh, the, when the, when Flyboy asked her to, <laughs> right? I mean, like like the very opening uh, of her seeing the hands burst through the wall, uh, which is a, a great uh, great opener, uh, great reference to repulsion, reference to repulsion. Uh huh. So I th- I think that would have been more successful. Or at least clearer storyline wise, if that ending was how she walks over to the calendar is she kind of touches it slowly and right. then all the hands come out of the wall. And I think they could have done that same thing where she kind of reaches for the helicopter door and then hands reached out of the windows or something like that out of the helicopter or busted through the door in that same fashion and had her turn and then she woke up. Then I think it would be. It would still be confusing if she died or not, but at least we'd know that that was kind of what they were intending instead of it's... I, I think it's too ambiguous right now. Um, really? I, I mean, I, I, I think it's very clear just that they, you know... That that's, they made it? Yeah, that, that you know, they're just marking days off on the calendar even though there, there's this very idyllic setting and, and the, the Shawshank ending, as we call it. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, this this... You know, Caribbean or obviously vice kind of versa theme. with uh, Frank Darabont being a horror. There you go, uh, aficionado. Yeah, um, he he loves that stuff, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he wrote the the Blob and uh, or the remake of the Blob, and then the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street three with Nightmare on Elm Street Russell. three, and yeah, Frank Darabont wrote Nightmare on Elm Street three. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite one. That's a great <laughs> one. That's there that is go. my favorite one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I didn't have a problem with the the ending. I, I actually, you know, I, I kind of liked it. Um, it took the uh, dawn ending, you know, a, maybe a step further, right? Possibly, yeah. And then also kind of gave it the wiggle room if you wanted to have the pessimistic reading, I guess. Yeah, uh, exactly. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, all I meant was like that, that the the movie overall, just you know, to start to finish, they were doomed at the opening, and at the end, they were still doomed. Right. It's like it's not as if they sort of solve the problem or whatever. It's just, you know, and, and maybe part of it is like you would explore this. Uh, well, what happens when this is the last generation or, you know, possibly they w- wouldn't make it to the end, you know, and, and how do people live their lives? And, th- you know, that's what, you know, the I guess novel and the movie on the beach were exploring. Uh, and the idea is in that one, uh, there was a nuclear war. And the fallout was like surrounding the earth and they, the, the, the main characters were in Australia and like somehow the fallout was going to hit Australia last. And the idea is that everyone only has months to live, but they continue living as if, uh, as if there's a future to plan for and whatever. And, and there's this interesting, uh, exploration of, of sort of what, you know, people are doing in that situation. Now the subject matter and the idea of, um, you know the apocalypse in that sense. You know it's it's very grim and and like the uh, story is is very uh, 
it's it's hard to take in the sense that like it's uh it explores this stuff so thoroughly that it it get it's very depressing um but the, i guess there is an interesting idea there that like a lot of these people in on the beach were still exploring a possible future and you know even though sort of intellectually everyone knew that like there was no future right Right. normality <clears throat> and 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 that's kind of kind of a little bit they touch on that a little bit in in uh, uh day of the dead um but anyway i i kind of find that the zombie apocalypse uh movie um can only be taken so far uh without some sort of either sharp turn <laughs> like sharp turn to like conclude it yeah or uh you know taking itself a little less seriously which is why I found Return, uh, you know, a, a lot uh, more palatable than Day. If I could jump in and kind of expand on that, um, the doom that you talked about through Day, it kind of desensitized me by the end when all that grisly violence happened because everything <laughs> sucks. You're not going to make it, and then by the end, you're like, okay, that they got what they, we knew that they were going to get the whole time. Right. Well, also, it's because they were like those, like those shitty soldiers, and you you wanted them to die. Ex- so that, yeah, that's exactly. Part of it too. But Return had you know these groups that were you know very likable. First of all, you know you kind of got in 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 touch, especially with the the guys working in in the supply store. Um, but what they had were moments of this like success. You know, like they went and killed this first zombie, and they burned it. They put it in the in the um incinerator there and then you know we we we, we had a victory and then all of a sudden the two guys are, are really sick and then so we yeah. got to take care of them so we got to make sure that they're getting sicker and sicker they call the paramedics and we find out they're dead and then by that time things get worse again so you had like these like rises oh, gee, and I can't falls find a pulse here yeah. but but at least you had moments where you're like oh god they did it oh shit they didn't oh yeah. god they did it again <laughs> oh fuck they didn't do it again and it was like that gave you a little bit better of an like an emotional ride. That's right. true too. Yeah, it, it's it's structured better. I felt yeah. like I felt like Bub watching Day of the Dead. I was just kind of watching it like, <laughs> <gasps> hello, Annalisha. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, the 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 tones of of, of the two movies I, I think are the the biggest separation between them. Obviously, the, the they're both completely nihilistic. Uh, even even though you know uh, Day has this very kind of sunshiny ending and and uh return has the the absolute uh, obliteration ending um you know both uh um, but the actual ending is do you want a party i it, it, it is it is true because because yeah because day day just so completely encapsulates you in in despair and return gives you gives you this 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 fun sense of uh you know survival uh you know that's 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 going on and like you said there 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 are these turns where they're 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 almost making it they're almost getting out and then they get pulled back in you know i mean arguably that's that's a better written story right or at least what we saw on screen well uh, yeah i think I, i think like i said tonally and and musically uh it's it's a much more fun adventure even though even though it ends badly, it's it's still a fun ride to go on. The big graffiti, bloody graffiti text on screen, Return of the Living Dead. You know the the <laughs> fucking eighties metal, like eighties punk metal. It was yeah. great playing. I I just I had a blast watching it, and it, and it felt like it like flew by. It was just such a really good movie. And all of a sudden, we were already meeting um, the uh, the mortuary. I always forget his name. The uh, the guy that owns the mortuary and that that actor's in like everything you know like in those little bit strange character roles. Oh oh, like. Don Kalfa. Don Kalfa. He's the mortician uh, putting yeah. the uh, Ernie whatever is Ernie it is. yeah Ernie because it was Bert Ernie, Ernie, Ernie that's Bert what it was Ernie. yeah that's um, not, yeah Bert and Ernie I thought he was awesome no he's great uh, yeah he has these great Peter Laurie eyes. Um, yeah, very much this, so. This wonderful kind of manic energy, although he, like he always speaks in a very calm, sedated sort of tone. Um, oh, so obviously uh, we both we all like Return of the Living Dead uh, a little bit more than Day. Um, however, we <laughs> see them both for their um, cool moments. Um, but yeah, I, I I have to say that um, I would I I'd love to now go back into the Return of the Living Dead two, and I know there was a third one. Mm. I thought there was a fourth one. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they made five, I think, with with the five? with the title. I mean, well, four and five were made back to back for the Sci Fi Channel in like the early two thousands. So, I mean, they're they're. <laughs> Did you see them? I, I would no. I, I mean, I remember watching like a uh, like the opening of four on TV and going, "Whoa, no, thank you." Um, I mean, I, I mean, two they're... being pretty good, almost a remake of this one, or two feeling very much like this one. Because I actually saw that first when I was a kid, um, and then I saw the first Part two? one. Yeah, I saw two. Mm-hmm. It was on HBO or something, and I I watched it. You know, my parents didn't want me to. I, I yeah, I, I remember yeah. I remember coming in at some point watching it on TV, uh, where, where the Michael Jackson zombie comes in, um, <laughs> and you <laughs> know, right. in, in the perfect red you know outfit or whatever, <laughs> and going, oh, okay, fun. You know, and and watching it from that point and going, oh, okay, this seems kind of stupid, but you know, whatever. Uh, not not realizing it was the sequel to Return. Um, well, that's funny that they they put a uh, Michael Jackson in there. It was I, just a jacket, but I mean, it was you know, everyone knew what it was referencing. Sure, I, I was mentioning to, uh, to to Brian. Oh, maybe we should put uh, Thriller in, in with this uh, in the, in the mix here. You know, the whatever it was, twelve minute short film, the John Landis thing. Uh, the music video, and only because they're you know right before the famous zombie dance, uh, while it's the Vincent Price narration, the dead kind of coming out of their graves looks ex- almost exactly like the montages of the dead coming out of their graves in Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, and and I think both of those were heavily influenced by the uh, the EC Comics look. Uh, William Stout the the you know, makeup effects guy on on Return mm. talked about that a lot. That uh, you know, he and Dan were were big fans of EC, and that that's that's the aesthetic that they wanted. Um, that hand coming out was always that one close up that they would put in those EC like Tales from the Crypt comics. And right, it was like the one thing it was just the hand, and you knew that the zombie was up and ready to go, right. and then it would switch back. But that was just a classic move. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. So you think that that a lot of the the look of those scenes and those montages in Return were more influenced by those comics versus the Thriller video. I mean, like, you know, because Thriller obviously was a huge, 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 you know, uh, landmark success. And, you know, it, it everybody was aware of it. You know, you couldn't not be. Right. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I think that was that was their their biggest take is um, Dan had actually worked on on two other movies that had kind of zombies in them. One was a segment of um heavy metal called uh, B-52. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, which is the, probably the best part of that movie, um, which is the... Uh, when you say Dan, you mean Dan O'Bannon? D- Dan O'Bannon, yeah, sorry. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. Which is uh, fighter pilots coming back, getting shot up and then coming back to life. And, you know, the, the plane crashes and, and the very end of that segment is a guy, the last survivor, you know, uh, on top of the plane is all these dead pilots are coming out of the muck. Uh, you know, and, and most of them are just sort of silhouettes with a little bit of hint of the the rotting decay, and they're mostly skeletal. Mm-hmm. And then, and then of course, he also worked on uh, Dead and Buried, which uh, is a much more right, kind right. of Lovecraftian story. But um, you know, certainly more towards the Romero zombies, if 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 you want to call them that. But I guess um, to start like heading to the end of this of our zombie evolution here, uh, part three. I mean, I did want to just mention one thing and how. Um, you know, some of the zombies now that are coming out in current films, like we should just talk about them specifically, I think zombie land. Um, I just rewatched that recently. Um, and I thought that that was a successful, um, comedic romp where they knew that it was the end of the world. However, they went for that. Let's just have fun with it mode. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. the zombies mm-hmm. were fun. Like the, the rules that they set up for how to survive the zombie apocalypse was very cool. Yeah. Very reminiscent of Max Brooks's book and things like that. So, I thought that was I thought that was a, a, an interesting film. Um, and I haven't I haven't seen that one with uh, uh, Schwarzenegger yet. That's the one I'm interested in seeing. It's oh called, yeah, Lu- Lucy, I think. Molly or Lucy or Molly, something? Maggie, right? Maggie, 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 Maggie. There you yeah. Go. And it's it's Schwarzenegger, so it has to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so any any closing remarks or anything? Yeah, I mean, I guess just in in terms of the. Uh, evolution of of the zombie movies I, I i do feel like these these two were were kind of the the high watermark um you know in in terms of the 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 makeup effects and uh in terms of where where what what you could do with with the the i guess tonality of the stories 
because I I don't I don't know if I mean I guess Dawn was was more fun, but you know it, it was not an out and out comedy like Return. So mm. I I feel like that that is that it was kind of the the biggest significant step towards making zombies uh, way more mainstream and palatable to the masses um, was was making Return such a fun party movie. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Day, uh, as, as George said, really appealed to the trolls who really liked the, to the, <laughs> the, the, the gore and, and the, uh, the, the, the hopelessness uh, aspect of it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I, also, like... Return of the Living Dead, okay, it it uh, was more successful than, um, what do you call it, uh, Day of the Dead. But um, I'm sure part of that was that it was a lot more fun, and then part of it was that it was rated R and not uh, unrated. Uh, so mm-hmm. it, it could still have that theatrical run. Um, but I imagine uh, most people uh, ended up, what, seeing these two movies uh, on video? Right. It's like, I these had not. to be this like video store... Uh, uh, finds but it, it was you know return um it was definitely a lot more fun and i watched it in sort of the early 2000s but then um uh just saw it again you know for this and yeah it was a lot of fun it's it's a good movie to watch with a crowd i've i've seen yeah, it, at, at it a bunch of different theaters over the years i, I found myself like man i i hate watching this at home you should definitely be watching this at a midnight it's, screening or yeah like, a, like that's a, a i was clapping theater. at moments i was literally yeah. cheering by myself just like oh that was awesome <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah yeah but you know there'd be a lot more energy to feed on if if uh yeah, if exactly. theaters still existed um <laughs> but um but you know it, whenever they come back uh or if that happens uh this is one of the movies you'd, you'd kind of want to see there you know especially because those like the the montage of the you know Smoke going up, rain coming down, you know, going, you know, deep into the earth and then like a zombie popping out. Like, you know, they kind of do that once or twice and, and, you know, that sort of theme song kicks in and then it's, do you want a party? And it's like, you know, that whole <laughs> thing, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you feel like the audience would start cheering, right? It's like, it, it's the, that fun part of it. I, I did like what Brian said that, that, uh, the, the zombies were much more the antagonists in, in return uh, and and day, oh, yeah. it's it's much more the the humans that you're worried about. Oh um, yeah, you know that, that's, that's, that's an interesting dynamic that the, that most of Romero's movies have is is that you know people are, are their own worst enemy kind of idea. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Which I think I think Walking Dead adopted most of that, and that's right. been you know season after season the villain's always been a human. It's never been. A, a main zombie boss. Yeah, right. The the, the zombies are just obstacles, but and the humans are the other villains. I mean, it 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 makes right like and, and you absolutely have to have that for that TV show because it just keeps going on and on. Now, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's also sort of the the main problem with it is like it's sort of going nowhere. It starts chasing its tail at, at a certain right, point, right. and it's like you know, yep. and that is inherent in that type of story. And that's kind of what I was getting at with that, like finding the limits of what a zombie apocalypse story uh, can be, which is that you get started down this path and that's interesting. And then you get stuck in the doldrums and it's really boring. And it's just like, okay, well, is there a way out of it? If there's a way out, let's find what that is. And that would be interesting. If there's not a way out of it, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, what is this story? Oh, here, I I wanted to mention this. I totally forgot about it. I I listened to an interview with uh, Richard Liberty the, the guy who played Dr. Frankenstein, uh, and, and a guy asked him the, the same question that I had. It was like, he, he asked him, did, is, uh, did they forget the squib on your head when you get shot? Because you only get shot in the chest, and, and Bub finds you, and you don't come back to life. And uh, he's like, no, they, they never put a squib on my head, and they, they never did a, a, a shot of me in zombie makeup or, or anything. So I, I guess that was just a, a fluke. That uh, you know, <laughs> they, they 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 didn't quite follow through on the rules there. Poor well, Bob. I, I thought that the rule was you if you just died of natural causes or whatever, you, you don't come back to life. Uh, 
uh, it's it's a little unclear, I guess, because I mean, you know, I, I don't. It's I don't only think... through bites and you know, like werewolf uh, slash vampire. Right. Yeah, you know, you have at to least have, for have the infection. At least for Romero's dead. Yeah. yeah, all these dead ghouls like would would come back, but you you didn't know from where for why, you know. Well, the the, the question I always had was if if you can only become a zombie from being bit by a zombie, how did the initial zombies wake up? Right. I think that that's that's always like where did that first one pop up? Was it the cemetery zombie in Pittsburgh? Right. Was it the guy that was coming for her, Barbara? Right. Was yeah. it him? I you mean, you, like you, so. you you have to think that you know that this was this was a just a a, 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 a microcosm look at what was happening all over the world because um, I, I think I think they mentioned that in night um, that that there are reports of this all all over the world. Yeah, um, so it just happened. It's a natural occurrence that just happened. Right, right. Which is why I, I thought it was it was uh, it was just a- anyone who died. Uh, but, you you, you well, had to. Be, while return be weary. goes ahead and re- return goes ahead and says no, it was the U.S. Army that did this. Right, yeah. and uh, <laughs> this is a gas that they created or a chemical that they created, and they are the ones that are now going to screw the entire planet over. Right, mm-hmm. typical military fuck up. Typical army fuck up. The transportation department got the orders crossed. Typical. <laughs> Is there anything else you wanted to add, or? Not really. I mean, uh, Michael, you don't know any um, good uh, clue stories uh, for Return, do you? I mean, there's nothing. Uh... Uh, um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it, it's okay if you don't. It, it's just like I'm just curious. I mean, pro- probably nothing he hasn't said like a thousand times in other other interviews. I mean. So you 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 know Clue. So yeah, Clue and I got to be pretty good friends. Uh, he, but, um, he was in quite quite a few uh, film and TV roles. Oh, he was. I in was looking thousands. Looking, I mean, just endless amounts. Tons of, of stuff. Um, is he a nice guy? Is he as nice as he seems on screen? Is <laughs> like, you know. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was a great response. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, Clue's Clue's great. He's he's. I I, I call him the, the the patron saint of of hopeless artists. Um, you know he's he's yes. he's very oh, he's, I mean he's very very he he doesn't take shit from anybody uh, and he doesn't suffer fools um, you know as as most people uh, of his age and ilk would would not but um, you know uh, you know kid I want to tell you something and I mean this sincerely no matter what happens don't name it after me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he's since retired from from acting regularly. He, he he has retired, although he was just in uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, he he had a he that's had a right cameo in that. Um, Tarantino. He's just so funny when he, yeah. he puts in all the cameos. So. so to answer my original question, no clue stories. Huh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I mean, yeah. The, the 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 most famous one was just that he. Uh, uh, just, just how close he came to, to killing the the guy, uh, the the tar man. Um, oh no! Not 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 Alan Turman who played the tar man, but there was a little guy uh, that they put in the suit for that specific shot. Um, With uh, him knocking the head off or whatever. Him knocking the head off because you know they they uh-huh. had to build up the the body uh, above the uh, above the uh, neck or whatever above shoulders. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. But you know huh. the the. the <laughs> Yeah, I mean they 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 they, they did it in, in one take, uh, and it, it was it was exactly what it looked like. Uh, and and Clue said he he really was like, kind of re- regretted doing that. I mean afterwards because he was like, man, if I had if I had just slipped a little bit, I would have killed that guy. Because um, he, he he <laughs> oh man he he didn't he didn't know how firmly attached the head was, and and he didn't want to screw up the shot, you know. Uh, and Clue's just the consummate so he gave, professional, he so all? he just you know just went up there and. <laughs> whacked and and like and and i mean he, he said you know the 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 whole the whole like every everything on set just stopped and went dead silent you know just for a second because like oh nobody God. knew what what the hell was going to happen um so he was uh an inch away from creating another twilight zone pretty much the movie pretty much. oh pretty boy much. yeah um john landis yeah. yeah so ties back into a thriller there you go anyway well cool i think that that uh that should just about wrap it up. Um, we should probably do something a little happier next time. Maybe something not so apocalyptic, <laughs> yeah. uh, just to cleanse the palate a little bit. But this was a really fun series to do. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, no, it it was uh, 
o- overall, you know, it was, it was pretty fun to explore. Um, you know, I think, yeah, Brian, maybe you got the right idea. Let's uh, switch to something <laughs> a little um, more switch lighthearted. Gears. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for listening to the Grindhouse Institute. I'm Brian Foster. And um, yeah, we'll be back with our next episode, which we will not, I guess we don't know what that is yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure, figure that out. TBD. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>